Okay, so um, let's get started. It's almost 10. Um, thanks everyone for joining. This is a very short notice. I've, I've scheduled this last uh, three days back. Um, so I just want to go go uh, give an overview of uh, what it means to be uh, OpenShift in uh, developers' life and also in operations life, day-to-day -day life. Um, so I'll be covering basically what is OpenShift uh, in few words and then jump directly into uh, developer's perspective and operations perspective. Um, so OpenShift uh, in a quick nutshell, uh, if you heard of Kubernetes, uh, it's a enterprise ready Kubernetes um, running Docker containers inside. So it's an orchestration tool on top of Docker containers for for your day-to-day uh, -day development and also they were running uh, applications in inside production so it's it's suitable for both development process CICD and also running your deploying your applications in production that's that's the open shift in nutshell um, let's directly jump into how to set up open shift and also uh, some of the developer and operations perspective of open shift um, so quickly, uh, let me go go over OpenShift uh, architecture. Um, so you, you can run OpenShift on any physical, virtual, or private or public uh, infrastructure. Um, and you basically have your nodes and masters. Nodes basically run your Docker containers. Uh, they host your applications. And master will basically take care of the health of these containers and also scheduling of these uh, containers on those nodes. And you have a routing layer which basically exposes uh, your internal services to outside world, or you can just talk to internal uh, applications using a service layer. And OpenShift also provides a internal Docker registry and a persistent storage for your um, mode one applications, like your monolith applications, and also whichever application which needs a storage as part of its uh, runtime. And there is a developer and operations uh, interactions with this environment. That's I'm going to cover those parts in the future slides. Um, so this demo, uh, this uh, uh, session will be most of the demos. Uh, it won't be a, too much of uh, slides. So I'm gonna directly jump into how to basically set up OpenShift. Um, so if you have the latest binary of OpenShift uh, that you can download from open, uh, GitHub slash OpenShift slash Origin. Just go into the releases section and then pick a binary which suits which suits your environment. Uh, after you download the binary, that's called OC binary. Um, you just do OC cluster up, and that's all you need to basically start the OpenShift cluster on your local machine. Uh, if you have Vagrant already installed on your machine, so I'm I'm going to do that. I think I've already done that piece. So let me um, jump here and see. Let me close this. Sorry. So what you do is OC cluster up and uh, that will bring a, that will start uh, OpenShift inside the Docker daemon, All right. So if it, it needs to have your Docker daemon running. So let's make, uh, make sure you have a Docker install uh, and then do a OC cluster up after that. Uh, OpenShift also provides metrics for the running containers. So if you want that feature, just put uh, metrics, uh, is equal to true so that you have those metrics also installed onto OpenShift cluster. I've already done this. Um, let me show you. Um, I just deleted this one. So uh, let me go to the uh, UI uh, and show you that. So the OpenShift origin is basically running on my machine at this location, 10.0.1.14. This IP you will get when you do the OC cluster up piece. Okay. So once I get into this, uh, you have a default user, uh, basically a called developer and password is developer. Log in with that user and you'll be basically given with an empty slate for to work on. So I'm going to create a new project here. A new project, let's say development. Uh, that's what I mean, I want. Uh, I call it dev. Okay, and it's great. And once you create the uh, namespace or a project, Okay, so you'll basically see um, your project listed here. This is your project. And you can all, you can have more projects uh, created by admin. And all these projects are basically access control. So administrator can control, administrator can control who can access these uh, namespaces. 
So your QA uh, guys or girls may not be able to see uh, development projects or dev may not be able to see the operations production instances. So all these namespaces are access controlled. Um, so I'll start with dev now. Um, and then basically go through some of the features of the UI and also the CLI, how you basically, how a developer gets started with their uh, application deployment. Um, so this is what I'm going to cover. So deploy Docker container, Docker images or Docker applications uh, into the OpenShift cluster using various methods. So OpenShift provides a wide variety of uh, support. Um, so you can deploy Docker images in, inside OpenShift. Let's say you have your you you have your Docker images already built outside somewhere, and you want to deploy these uh, applications inside OpenShift cluster. You can do it by uh, directly using the Docker images, or you can write a Docker file and then say OpenShift uh, go build this uh, Docker image out of using this Docker file. You can do that. And also one other way that OpenShift provides, which no other tool as of now provides is a source to image. <clears throat> Let's say you, your developers doesn't have a knowledge of Docker, how to write a Docker file or how to use containers. OpenShift out of the box provides a uh, good, good amount of tools to basically use your source and then convert into image without having the knowledge of Docker. Eventually you can learn Docker, but if you wanna get started uh, using containers, uh, without uh, waiting for a uh, Docker knowledge, just use source to image. And OpenShift also provides uh, binary deployments. Um, so you, let's say you have a Tomcat uh, container running inside your uh, cluster and you want to deploy, do hard deployments of your var file into that container, you can do that using the OpenShift binary deployments option. I'm not going to cover all of these, but I'll touch base on some of these to basically give you a taste of how it uh, how it looks uh, for a developer. Okay, uh, let's go and get started. I'm going to uh, I'm I'm going to deploy a Docker image first, and then show you other uh, deployments, some some of the other deployments as well. So um, this is my Docker Hub. Um, I have a image called Node.js. So welcome. This is a simple. Uh, Node.js application that is uh, that is listed here. So I converted this code source code into a Docker image and then pushed into Docker Hub. Okay. So what what this has is basically it runs on 8080 port and then when I hit the root URL it says hello world and then the give the host name and also it has health URL uh, which basically gives uh, okay whenever I uh, hit this uh, health URL. Uh, if this flag is false it, it's going to send uh, 404. Uh, I'm going to change this flag inside uh, this um, endpoint. When I hit this endpoint, it's going to make the container unhealthy. This is what this is a pretty simple application, not too complex. What I'm going to do is um, I've converted this into a Docker image. I'm going to deploy this Docker image inside OpenShift. Okay. So for that, what I do is uh, go into my namespace and then click on Add to Project, and then click on Deploy Image. Click on image here and then choose the image name that I have on the Docker Hub. You can point it to a different uh, internal uh, Docker registry, it's totally acceptable. Uh, but for now, it's basically pointing to the Docker Hub. And I hit uh, search, it basically fetches that image metadata and shows me what is there inside. Um, it shows me that I'm running this as a root container, which is not recommended. So please fix it. Even then, I can run it uh, now for now, but um, OpenShift basically give, basically gives you a warning that this has a this is running with root image. Don't do that. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do is let's say I'm going to name this as Docker Welcome, and then provide environment variables or labels whatever is needed, and then hit create. This is going to deploy a Docker image inside my OpenShift cluster. So you see that currently it is pulling the image now and then basically uh, deploying it inside the OpenShift cluster. So the, when, see, uh, when you see the light blue, it is basically pulled and then bring it up, bring it up. And then when you see the full blue color, it is, it, it's actually meant that it is doing the health checks, okay? So I can add health checks here, um, but let's go and create a route for this uh, application. So currently this is running as a, container inside the OpenShift cluster, but it's not really exposed outside. So it is accessible from inside the cluster, but not exposed outside. 
So if I want to expose this uh, application outside, what I do is just hit on create route, uh, open shift out of the box, creates a route for you. Uh, it basically maps the 8080 port of your application to the 80, uh, the 80 port of your HA proxy. Uh, that is again provided by OpenShift. You don't need to do any any of those. Just hit create here, and it's going to give a nice URL that you can consume uh, for this application. So hit this URL, and you see that it is working. So it just says hello world and your version of application, and then the host on which it is running. Okay, so that's all you need to basically uh, deploy a Docker image. I can do it from the CLI. I can do it from here. It's both are same, so don't need to worry. Um, so let's say I want to up, uh, apply a health checks on this container, running container. So what I what I do is click on add health checks. So there are two types of health checks here. One is a readiness probe, and the other the other is liveness probe. Uh, the readiness probe basically tells you that whether the application is applicant uh, container is ready or not, whether it has come up or not. Liveness probe basically tells you that whether this application is still running or not. Like when you run it, uh, when you're running it, this is basically a, uh, you can check with the application health, your health, uh, basically by hitting a URL or making some um, command to run. Okay, so how I can add, I can just click on add readiness probe here and then slash health. This is, this is the endpoint that is exposed here, right? So this is the endpoint that is exposed here. And this, when this is hit, we basically get 200 response. 200 response means it, the application is healthy. If it is not 200, it's basically going to consider it as unhealthy. Okay. So I'm going to give, we can give initial delay. What is the time that you need to wait all these pieces? Uh, and also, I'm going to add liveness probe here. So liveness probe uh, basically checks for the application health when it is running. The, I'm giving you the same URL for both of them. It makes sense for me. It's just very small application and then click. Save. What it does is it's going to uh, basically deploy a newer container with, with these checks. So it's it's very minimal. Uh, it makes sure when this is up, only then it will basically remove this. So you have that guarantee. Uh, so the, the newer version of your application is running. If I go hit click uh, on this uh, URL, it basically shows the container, right? And also let's see if this is really doing a health check or not. Um, I'm going into the container. Um, and then look at the logs. So you can see there is a health inquiry uh, console log that is brought up here. So where is that coming from? Whenever this health URL is hit, I'm just putting a log like health inquiry, and then it's it's basically showing that log here. So it's really checking for the health of the application. Um, let's say let's do um, let's um, make this app unhealthy, and then see if it automatically fixes it or not. Okay. So what I'm going to do is there's an endpoint called cancer. That's like I'm injecting a flag, which basically tells that this is not healthy based on the this flag. So I'm going to do that. So slash cancer. It says it is done. And then now when it checks for the health of this URL, when, when it checks for the health of this part, it should be able to uh, it considers that it is not healthy, and then it automatically fixes it and uh, brings up a newer version. And you can uh, basically specify how many uh, number of times it needs to check before it decides that this is unhealthy and then uh, bring up a newer version. So all these controls, you can do it. So you see that it is it is showing as unhealthy now, not ready. And then basically what it does is it automatically fixes it and then restarts it again. So this is a very important feature if you want to have a good night's sleep, right? So you don't want to wake up in the middle of night to fix these things. Uh, the system should automatically fix itself. So this is what you have um, when you have when you have OpenShift. Uh, you basically get all these features out of the box. It's going to uh, basically check and then uh, bring up a newer version. Ideally, you want to run multiple versions of your applications. Um, I mean, multiple. Uh, uh, containers of the same application just so you have load balancing so that even if one of them goes out, you will you still have your application up and running. So it automatically fixed and brought, brought the container back. That's what, that's what you need. And what other, other important features that operations needs is to, to be able to scale the application whenever it's needed. 
So what all I do is I just hit this button to scale the application from one to three. So in in very few minutes or seconds, it 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 scaled to um, two and then three again, right? So it it basically scaled application with a hit of button, and you can also do auto scaling all this magic. But um, let's go and see if it is really doing the scaling or not. So I have this uh, Docker welcome application running three instances of it. Okay, let's make one of them unhealthy. So I'm going to do uh, cancer on one of those and then what it does is it basically takes one of that out and then runs the two two of the other ones okay let's go and hit the url so that we make sure it is hitting it uh, curl when i do that it's basically showing different host, host names each time see you see this one right so it's showing different host names each time so what what does it mean it basically doing a round, round robin uh, load balance on each of these uh, uh, containers and one of them is unhealthy now so if i hit it it basically doesn't show me the unhealthy part so it, it it took out the unhealthy part and has only two parts which are healthy so this is a very great feature if you want to um, have your applications cons consistent right so it does take care of your application health automatically without you going and doing a uh, manual jobs there okay uh, this is what I have uh, for the manual scaling of the application and also application health. Uh, you can do uh, many kinds of application health check, health checks, not only uh, HTTP health checks, you can do many other types of uh, uh, health checks as well. Okay, so we are done with uh, deploying a Docker image uh, into the um, OpenShift cluster. Let's go and uh, Docker file is pretty similar you just basically say uh, strategy equals to docker instead of um, doing it like like this so if you want to deploy a docker image you just say from the so uh, command line uh, we did it from the ui but if you want to do it from command line you just do uh, like this uh, debian master that's my docker hub username node.js slash welcome so when you do this it basically deploys the container Okay, uh, th that's the um, same piece which I done from the UI. Uh, next thing I'm going to show you how to deploy a source uh, image, source to uh, Docker image, and then show you how to read the Docker file also. Uh, looks like we have some questions here. Let's go through um, these quickly. I can hear you. Okay. Uh, three questions. How is OpenShift providing a resolvable DNS uh, host name to your parts? So how how is it op OpenShift providing? So basically what OpenShift does is uh, OpenShift deploys a HA proxy container uh, that that basically uh, you point you you create a wildcard DNS and uh, you uh, you point that wildcard DNS to the node which is running the HA proxy. So that's how when you hit the URL, um, HAProxy will understand that it, this needs to go to that particular application and then it does the, the routing for you. So it's, it's very simple. You you create a wildcard DNS and point it to the node where your HAProxy is running. Or typically in, in, uh, in small installations, it is the same node as where you run your uh, OpenShift cluster. Um, does it only use the registries or does OpenShift Enterprise provide uh, as part of the packages? So um, the registry in itself is uh, swappable. If you have some other registry that is running your enterprise, you can uh, point your registry to uh, point to, point your registry to the OpenShift cluster that you're running. Or OpenShift will itself will provide a registry inside uh, uh, the cluster itself. So it's it's totally flexible on how you want to use it. Uh, so your first slide show rel host over the masters and atomic for the worker nodes do the masters uh, so they can be on atomic too or they can be on rel uh, it's it can be anywhere uh, it can be any of the os it can be on centos too but it's if it is like openshift origin you can use centos um, so it's totally um, uh, flexible on what kind of os you want to choose it, uh, as long as it is centos or rel based uh, what is a github project that we should download um so this is yeah peter has given you uh like right yeah this is a this is uh, where you need to 
go for the downloading the binary. Okay, so I'm going to switch back to the um, demo. So in the next thing is I want to de de uh, show you a Docker file based deployment and also a source to image based deployment. So for source to image, what you do is um, click on add to project here, and then you can choose a lot of templates that are already available here. So OpenShift out of the box provides support for many languages, PHP, Perl, Node.js, Java, and JBoss uh, related. So many of these are supported by OpenShift. You can just use any of these templates or you can create your own template and then publish it here, uh, which is specific to your organization. Um, and then uh, uh, and then make it useful for other developers to consume. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a Node.js uh, template and then basically deploy the same application using source to image instead of using a Docker uh, image. Okay. So um, I can do it in two ways. I can do it from UI from here, uh, clicking on Node.js and then basically selecting, uh, uh, let's say s 2 i welcome, and then basically pointing the Git repository where I have this, right? The same repository that I have here and then hit create, I can do it from the CLI also. Let's, so let me show you the CLI uh, version of it. I'm in a project, I have already cloned the project, Node.js welcome. What I'm next going to do is, oh, see who am I? Just to make sure who am I? So I'm a developer, I'm a developer here, that's good. Then OC uh, new app, that's the command for most of the creation of application deployments. And then do uh, dot, dot means use the current repository that I have cloned and then name it uh, with some name, okay? So name equals to um, yes to I source to image, uh, welcome, okay? That's all, that's all you need for basically um, uh, doing. Okay, I'm not in the right project. I'm in a different project, which is this is dev project and I'm in trying to access it on my project. So let me switch to the, my project. OC project dev. So it's going to switch my project to dev project. And then basically uh, do the OC new app again. Okay, so that's all it, it does. So if in dev, yeah, you have Docker image application running and then I switch to dev project and then do the same command, OC new app current directory that basically resolves to the GitHub repository that I'm using and then give it a name. That's it. So you see that the another application has come up now that is S2I welcome, right? And then it is doing a build process now. So if I go hit on click uh, view log. So what it does is it understands that your application is a Node.js application because it has a package.json. That's smart. And then it clones your uh, source code and uh, it reads the package.json and then it installs all the packages that are uh, mentioned inside the package.json. It is applicable if it is a Java application, it's going to read the palm.xml file and then install all the dependencies. So it basically understands the core files and then uh, creates application out of it. So it, it has already um, created a Docker image that is called S2I welcome, that is what I gave. And then it is now pushing it to the internal registry. You see that it is now pushing uh, image, Docker image to the internal registry. So this internal registry is access control. You can control who can uh, view, who can um, read, who can basically uh, push it, push to that registry. All these can be done uh, on this internal registry, which is good. So I have this application um, from source code converted into Docker image and then pushed into the internal registry and application is again deployed, right? So this is a very cool, cool feature if you want, to, if you want uh, to run your applications in Docker containers, but you don't know how to write a Docker image or Docker file, it is a very uh, useful application, useful feature. So uh, application is deployed now, I'm just going to create a route, just like I did for the other application. So it's, it has a route now, and then hit create here. So you see that it is version 1.1 um, and it is giving the same output. So this has been built from source, not from Docker image. So uh, if you are not aware of how to write a Docker file, this is a pretty good feature. 
So um, there's one more interesting feature that I that I want to show you here. Uh, let's say this is same application and this is the same application, right? Uh, let's say this is a newer version of my application and this is an older version of my application. And I want to see, um, I want to basically expose a route which uh, does a canary deployment, like partially 99% uh, or like maybe 33, 66% of traffic goes to the first part container and 33% um, uh, of the traffic goes to the second uh, uh, application, the newer application, because I want to test the features before it, before it goes out to the general public, and just like Facebook does, right? Facebook does their roll, uh, rollouts uh, to partially a set of groups and then spread it across all users. So I can do that very uh, using a very simple configuration here. So I just go to applications and then routes. Uh, let's say I want to, this is a production URL and this is a newer uh, URL. So I'm going to change this and click on actions, click on edit. You see that split traffic across multiple services, right? So what I do is I just click, click on this and then I choose source to I S to I welcome. I had already chose me, but I can just this is a drop down. I can pick it up from there, and then I want the old version, the production current production version, to have uh, uh, weight two, and then the newer version have weight one. So 66% goes to the product, current production application, and then 1% go, goes to the newer version of my application. So if I click on create save, and then you can see these are again combined here, and then traffic on the node one is basically 67% and then 33% uh, of the uh, traffic is going to the uh, newer application. This is a very important feature uh, if you wanna try out your features before it goes to the general public. Right? Um, for this, if you are not using OpenShift, you may have to do a lot of scripting to basically achieve this level of um, granularity on, on the network piece, okay? Um, <clears throat> One of the features I want to show you is um, let's uh, bring it back to the original state so that I can uh, show you some other demos. So I'm going to bring it back to the original state, click on edit, and then uh, remove the other service. Okay, so it's it's it has a new application now. Okay, so uh, next thing I want to show is how do you basically developers uh, change uh, developers check in their changes and how does uh, OpenShift pick up the changes and um, how do you do basically your CI CD process? That's what I want to show. So let's say um, I have this application running. Uh, I just want to uh, deploy a newer version of my application. Uh, what I do is go into application uh, builds, uh, click on builds. So this is my source to image uh, build. I click this and then in the configuration, I have GitHub webhook URLs. So I can copy this webhook URL and then basically set it up in the settings here. In the webhook section, I just add a new entry webhook. And then I can basically make it, whenever I change a source code, it automatically goes and uh, changes the, uh, it, it deploys a newer version of your application, right? I'm not going to do that because this is an internal IP. This is a very internal IP, so GitHub will not be able to talk to my um, OpenShift cluster. Instead of, I'm going to trigger it manually, okay? So I'm going to change the source code, uh, VI. I'm going to change the version from, let's say, V.1.1 to V2, okay? And then uh, commit my changes. I have an alias which basically commits Commit start. Okay, let me add it. Git add server. Git commit. It's a patch, and then Git push my changes. Okay, so this is going to push my changes to the registry, and then I do a new build because I don't have the webhook trigger, webhook uh, setup. I'm not. I'm going to hit this manually. Otherwise, it is automated. So you see that there is a new build running here, and then. When the build is ready, uh, let me scale this up and then show you. Um, so when the build is ready, it's basically going to kill the uh, old one and then uh, deploy the new one. All right. So this happens simultaneously. So this is part of your 
uh, AB deployments. Let's let's spin it up to let's say phi, and then that will be very clear for you. Um, yeah, it shows that because there's a newer version of deployment configuration. You can ignore that. Um, so I have five applications running. Let me uh, let me add one more here. Uh, let's say version is uh, three. I was quick in that. So uh, let's say version three here. I'm going to add it again. Um, git add, git commit. I just want to show you the AB process. That's why I'm doing it again. Let's have the newer version here. I'm going to build it again. And observe this here, uh, how it is deploying. OK, so if you want to do AB deployment, like rolling deployments, so how you do your, your rolling deployments is you, take, you bring up your newer one, take out the old one. You bring up your newer one, you take out your old one. So that's what it is doing now. So it's taking two of them out once and then basically uh, killing the old one. Like it, it does the rolling deployment automatically for you to out of the box. You don't need to do any custom scripts to basically achieve this level of uh, uh, automation. So if I do, if I hit this URL, it is going to show show version three. So that that is what I have in the newer version. So it out of the box, it does uh, a partial canary deployments and also a rolling deployments and you can also do different kinds of deployments it has hooks for basically uh, pre activities post activities all these hooks so that you'll be able to do custom deployments as well um, so that level of automation is built in inside uh, openshift so it's basically underlying it is using kubernetes um, but otherwise it's basically um, automated all all things for you uh, without you doing all these manual scripts. Okay, um, that's all. That's all I have in the uh, basically deployment side of it, and also uh, show you how basically it does the rolling deployments too. Okay, and if you want to do a Docker file based uh, build, what what you do is uh, you just display a simple flag um, when you create a new application. Like this, you just say strategy is equal to Docker, and instead of doing a source to image, it does it, it reads a Docker file instead of your so, a source code, and then do a Docker build on top of it. That's it. That's that's all you need to make make it um, Docker file based build. Okay. I'm not going to do, uh, jump into binary deployments, but I, I assume that you can do binary deployments. Uh, that I want to have a a different session uh, allocated for that because it's going to uh, take some time to show you that. So I'm going to have a different uh, uh, session schedule for that in in near future. Uh, templates here is basically the same thing which I showed you uh, here, right? Uh, templates are very interesting feature. Let's say uh, your application is in need of uh, multiple components to run. So it needs a MongoDB, it needs a, it needs a front end, it needs a back end, or it may be there some other uh, services it needs. And also, let's say your application is a microservice based uh, application. So microservice based application needs a lots of uh, applications running simultaneously to make it like one, right? So you can all com combine all these applications into one single template, like you see here. And then uh, hit hit one click, and your your whole application is up and running. So that that that's what you get when you uh, create a, a template. So let's let's take an example. This is a Node.js uh, MongoDB example, but you can have any number of uh, components that you want. In this case, I'm using a Node.js front end and then um, MongoDB back end. Okay, so if I publish it as one single template, and I can create. You can choose. You can put some parameters like what what kind of environment, what kind of environment you want to connect. All these pieces you can put, uh, and also specify some labels, and then just just hit create. Okay. So what it does is it deploys a MongoDB, and also it deploys a, a Node.js application. So it does both of them are done in single uh, hit. That's what you get um, from the template. Okay, uh, let me look for any questions you may have. Um, all right, so feel free to um, add questions if you are looking for any uh, specific details in, in whatever I say. So you see that there is a Node.js application. 
and also a MongoDB. These both are basically deployed with a single click. Um, and how does uh, this front end talk to the MongoDB instance that is uh, created here? It basically, uh, this application will expose a uh, environment variable, uh, which is which has the connection details of the MongoDB. So if I go into this container and then click on terminal, so it, I'm going into the terminal and then do print env, it has, uh, basically references to uh, environment variable referring to the MongoDB instance. Okay, so grab Mongo. It shows all the MongoDB related uh, host details and all. Let's say you don't want to hard code this with uh, environment variables. I mean, you can pretty much use a internal uh, DNS name uh, for communication between these two. So how you do that is basically you you use a um, DNS name that is provided by SkyDNS. So SkyDNS is a DNS name server that runs inside uh, OpenShift and provides you DNS services. So uh, in this case, uh, where is my application? So Node.js example, right? So from this, if I want to hit MongoDB, I just click on here. And... Uh, Let's say I want to hit MongoDB here. So I, all I all that I use is Mongo uh, DB. That's a service name. So service name is your uh, basically a DNS name. And then let's see if it is really connecting or not. You see that it is connecting there. So with the, with the service name, I can basically make internal application talk to each other. I don't need a specific uh, um, uh, IP address to connect. Okay, you can use IP address, but ideally you want to use just a host name or service name for internal connections. But this connection is not available outside. This is internal to the OpenShift cluster. If you want to expose it outside, you basically create a route, just like I did, right? Just create a route there. That's all you need. And for this Node.js uh, MongoDB example, MongoDB is sitting outside here. I just want to, if I want to group them together, I just click on group and then click on MongoDB. So I make them as one group. That's it. So all your components, you can visualize them uh, inside one single um, tab here. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions? So uh, was that Node.js MongoDB example a single image or a Docker compose of multiple images? So it's a Docker compose of multiple images. Um, OpenShift has tools to basically convert your Docker Compose to uh, templates. So you can just you do OC um, import image and then there's some specific lags you can mention for converting your Docker Compose into a template and you basically use that template for... So Docker Compose for uh, Docker is basically template for OpenShift. That's it. Okay. So it's multiple Docker images deployed as a single template. Okay, I think it looks like it. Uh, that's clear. Uh, all right, so let's go back to the demos. So I've also already shown you how to do a manual scaling, um, um, right? And just hit this button and you have your uh, scaling uh, done. That's it. So next thing, what I'm going to do is um, put resource limits on these containers. So I, I want to control how much CPU or application each of these container consumes. So how much, uh, um, so I can set the controls at, at namespace level, that is project level. So let's say I can control how much a dev namespace can utilize, how much CPU or uh, memory it can use uh, as a whole. Or I can control at a container level, so how much each container can use. So if I go click on deployments here, uh, let's say I want to control how much this um, uh, Docker welcome uh, container consumes, right? So click on this, click on actions, uh, click on set resource limits. You can set CPU and memory limits on it. Sorry. So um, let's say CPU, I want to put 10 millicores, not more than that. I can I can put a lower limit and I can put an upper limit. So lower limit is, is what is guaranteed for the application to run. And upper limit is basically up to which it can go. Beyond that, it will not be able to consume, okay? Um, 
and memory let's say i have uh, 50 mb of memory and the upper limit has 60 mb of, me- mem- of memory okay then hit click save then you see a newer deployment happening because you change the because you change the limits of the um, resource limits it is basically going to deploy a newer version okay so what is a millicore uh, millicore is basically like if you have a uh, thousand uh, cpu cycles right you just divide uh, let's say so if you have you, your cpu cycle is basically divided into thousand uh, parts and then each part is called one millicore that's it uh but other is is just a relative term it's not a um, tangible but it's tangible like it's not a uh, standard it's you basically divide your cpu cycle into 1000 and then from the 1000 pieces you give your uh, let's say 10 pieces to your application that's all that's all it means uh so maximum course is yes right okay so uh, it is now doing a health check Uh, it has spin up now but it is basically checking for the health of the application once that is done it should be able to up, uh, be up and running right okay <clears throat> if 10 millicores is not sufficient or 60 mb is not sufficient it is not going to bring up the application we need to keep that in mind um so we need to basically choose the limits based on your application size let's say if it is java it is one one type if it is node js it is another so all these pieces comes into picture uh, it looks like it's not able to use that 10 millicores of um, cpu so i need to basically uh, increase it more so that i can be able to run the application okay uh, let me do that application deployments uh, go to here and then increase the resource limits let's say uh 10 is the lower limit and then 20 is the upper limit okay and let's see how it behaves now so i have a newer deployment now and then it is spinning up we should wait for some time for it to finish so um the idea here is uh, you can basically um, limit the resources and then uh, and also do chargebacks so uh, chargebacks are not built in open openshift but there is a tool called cloud farms which basically does a cloud uh, chargeback for individual teams uh, uh, like how much they consume based on that you you specify a dollar value and then you can basically charge back for that team so it's when i increase the uh, millicores it basically come up and then application is running now if i click hit uh, hit on this url it is showing up okay the application is up and running so i have set the resource limits and also um i can see how much uh, this is consuming also so um it's not shown here but uh, let me show this has just come up uh, right so it it would not show right away it takes a few minutes to basically um, con- aggregate all the resources and then show it there okay um all right so let me log in as admin and show you what all pieces it is running as part of the uh, metric sir concern so uh, in order for me to shift to a super user what i do is oc login minus u system admin so that that switches me to a root user on openshift cluster that has pre- all pre- cluster where privileges but you need to run this command only on the system uh, like master it will you'll not be able to run it on uh, other machines uh, since in this case my master itself is my laptop so i'm going to do uh, i'm able to do that okay um i have a user called admin this is not really admin as of now uh, i'm going to do make, make this uh, admin user admin a cluster wide admin so for that what i do is oc adm that's called administrator uh, policy uh, and then do oc admin policy add cluster role to user it is very these commands are pretty friendly once you get used to it uh, you can guess most of the commands so, and then do a cluster admin role on to the user called admin okay 
now if i if i see i have permission to all the namespaces that are there on the uh, system so i'm going to see log into the dev i can see all the applications you can see the memory usage cpu and then uh, how much uh, network it has all these pieces the developer has no permissions on it that's why he's not able to see but you can see um, how much memory it's consuming how much cpu as a whole like for all these containers what is the aggregated uh, cpu usage okay so this is uh, looking at the metrics of the uh, application the other things uh, we have already seen uh, load balancing like how it is load balancing uh, the load balancing is internally built in you don't need to do any uh, customizations any ha proxy config changes that that you need for load balancing it, it automatically does out of the box okay and um, routing you have already seen you can create basically route for each of the application um, you can choose whether to expose your application outside or not uh, so if you if you don't want to expose your application just use it as a service a service name uh, for communication or if you want to expose outside, just create a route. So both are possible. Um, let me show you one other interesting feature. Um, so let's say you have you have your application running in uh, OpenShift cluster and it's having a huge uh, traffic on it. So you want to manu automatically scale the application based on the demand of the application. So you can do that now. Uh, for now, it is CPU based. So it basically, when you hit a certain CPU uh, uh, usage, you can automatically scale. Uh, there are efforts to bring uh, for bring it based on memory also, but most cases CPU works out of the box. Um, so let's say I have this application. I want to set up a auto scaling feature on this application. Okay. Uh, so currently, it looks like the application is using one millicore and 45 MB of memory for three. So I divide it and then, then come up with the figure to basically determine uh, what is the ideal CPU percent that I want to set up, okay? <clears throat> so for that, I go to applications and uh, deployments. Okay, click on the particular application and then hit uh, put uh, add autoscaler. So autoscaler, uh, as of now, like I said, it is based on CPU now, but it's going to have memory also in future. Um, I can choose how many minimum number of parts I want to run. Let's say I want to run one minimum part and then a maximum of four parts um, for this application. I, I don't want to cross four, four containers uh, even if there's a huge traffic because it's a cost, right? Running your container needs uh, infrastructure and if you have a huge spike, like a limited spike, you don't want to spend so much uh, um, money on that. So you can choose the maximum number of uh, instances that you want to run and you can also choose the cpu uh, limit like let's say if the application as a whole reaches 80 percentage of cpu target you need to spin up more that's what you said you, you tell your application okay uh, for that let me um, bring down these to one so that it will make my testing easy so i have one container running now uh, which might consume about uh, 11 12 mb and uh, one cpu millicore Okay, and, and then I'm going to do is set up an auto scaler on top of it. Okay. Any questions? Okay, I don't have any questions here. Go back. It's now scaling down to one. Uh, give it a couple of seconds to scale it, scale it down. Or I can choose a one which has, yeah, scale down to one. Then click on deployments. And then hit uh, set add auto add auto scaler, and then minimum number of parts is one, maximum is four, and then let's say I want to scale them when I hit the ten percent target of CPU, just to just for the testing purpose. Okay, one and then four. Let's save. save, and it does not deploy now because it's not a change in the deployment itself. It is basically a change on the uh, traffic level, right? So I have this application running, one instance of it is running. Uh, if I hit this, it's showing uh, output, which is good. And uh, one is uh, good now because there is no huge traffic now. So you see the auto scale is minimum is one and maximum is four. 
let's say I will pump in some traffic to this application and the, the application, uh, the OpenShift will take care of uh, automatic scaling of this application, okay? So for that, I have a tool called load test, um, which is similar to AB. I'm going to pump, uh, let's say 10,000 requests, concurrently 100 concurrent requests, and then hit, hit this um, endpoint, okay? And see how it behaves when it has a huge traffic spike. Um, so scaling up and scaling down, like scaling up uh, might happen after observing some traffic pattern, but scaling down might not happen immediately. This is uh, this is um, kept like that based on a, like purposefully. Uh, just want to um, just want to make sure. Um, it's not a spike, so it will try to keep it uh, there uh, for some time and before it uh, brings it back to the original state. Okay, so let's see if there's a traffic. Looks like the traffic is not enough. We need to pump in more. I will pump uh, like 200 of requests of them so that it might. Uh... Yeah, so now it's. We should be able to spin up to four or more. Looks like the pod is unhealthy now. <clears throat> because I have set the health checks, uh, it's 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 not able to decide the unhealthy feature and then basically scale it up and down. So let's yeah. The hard part is to basically choose the right uh, traffic to basically make it understand that there's a traffic increase. So, let's look at this. <clears throat> Yeah, it looks like I need to decide on the right parameters for this um, to to know how much I can pump in. Only then it will understand. Let me go and yeah, it looks like it's scaled now. You see that it's scaled to four. And when it scales to four, it will not immediately start those because uh, remember we have put a health check there. So it's going to do a health check query and then um, make it available for the cluster. So it's not going to do it like immediately. If you have this else, else check uh, things there. So it's now scaling to four, four containers running, right? So um, you need to study your application, like how much usage it is making before you come up with the figure of how much uh, memory limit you want to put or how much CPU percentage limit you want to put there. Um, yeah, it's now scaling down because the traffic is taken out. Okay. Um, all right, so uh, what, what do we have next? Um, we have load balancing, auto scaling is done. Um, we have seen uh, AB deployments. Um, so AB deployments are basically like your rolling deployments. We have seen that part. Blue-green deployments are like you can uh, basically um, when, when your application is running, you can have your newer instance and then uh, change the route to your newer instance, uh, make sure it is healthy, make sure it is working fine, and then basically kill the old one. But you have your two instances, the old instance and your new instance up and running all the time uh, before you uh, make a decision. So that is possible. The, these are called blue-green deployments. Um, so this is you can uh, do it using uh, OpenShift. All you do basically do is change the service name to point it to the newer version. So let me show you that. Um, so let's say this is a Docker application I'm running, right? So um, go into application and then click on routes. Node.js uh, welcome. In the edit YML section, what you do is uh, change the service name here. So um, instead of Docker welcome, you can point to the Docker welcome new, which 
you have deployed, which is a newer version of your application, and your route automatically uh, sends the traffic to newer version. Um, so that's that's how you can basically achieve blue green deployments inside OpenShift, like this. Okay, so all that you change inside uh, is a YML file, and your application traffic goes to the newer version. And simple canary deployments, I've already shown you how to basically split traffic between um, different versions of your application, uh, right? Just changing the weights on on the applications, and you basically split your traffic. So this is also have, we have shown. And the next thing is uh, triggers. Um, so uh, <clears throat> deployment uh, is basically deployment in OpenShift happens at various stages. You can have different types of triggers. Uh, triggers like whenever your uh, Docker image changes, you can have a you can trigger a new deployment, or whenever your config changes, like environment variable or any connection string that you want to change, you can trigger a new deployments, or whenever your base image changes, uh, you can trigger a automatic new deployment. Uh, what I mean by base image is, let's say your application is depending on Red uh, Rel Seven uh, or base image or CentOS uh, base image. Whenever you, uh, you patch that base image, it automatically going to patch all the dependent applications uh, in your cluster. So that way, uh, you don't need to deal with patching individual applications. So you just patch the base image, and it automatically gets reflected on all dependent images so this becomes very critical when you have security continuous security as a service so that's that provides a very good feature right so you don't need to have manual patches in place um so you can you can test it out on your own uh have by by using a base image and then dependent image and then update the base image it automatically goes and updates a dependent image Locks and metrics, we have uh, shown you. Um, let's go and take a look here. Um, let's say I want to have this application, right? I can have all the locks like this. Um, it shows on the terminal, or there is a log that is basically um, stored inside a uh, Kibana, uh, inside the ELK um, store also. So all these locks are persisted in, inside a Cassandra cluster. So you can have basically take a look for audit purposes or maybe to investigate why this container failed on, on that particular day. You can do all of those. So all those pieces are running inside OpenShift as a, all these pieces are running inside OpenShift as a containers itself. So your Hockler metrics and then um, locks are basically running inside OpenShift like, like this. You can scale them just like you scale your containers, you can also scale these. Okay. Um, that's all I have uh, basically um, for today's demo. I will add more uh, for developers and operations in future. Um, Overall, I think it's a pretty good tool uh, for developers and operations to automate lots of their activities um, and then run them smoothly without uh, uh, thinking about change, right? So if you want to move fast, you need to basically uh, maybe spin up more uh, applications, do more prototypes, all these pieces, you need to do it um, uh, very often and then change when of when operations think of change it's a very scary thing for them because all they want is to keep the uh, things running up and running uh, and uh, they would hesitate change but but with this uh, type of tool you basically embrace change and then basically develop fast and prototype fast and move pro move to production fast uh, OpenShift is a very good tool for that. I would highly encourage uh, I encourage you to try it out uh, on your own and then see how it works. When it is failing, it basically takes out from the cluster, so you don't need to worry. Uh, it's the application is up up and running still. Okay, so that's all I have. Um, send me any feedback you want you have uh, on onto my email my email is nine chakri at gmail dot com. Uh, you can reach out to me on Twitter. Um, this is my Twitter email uh, handle. So you can reach reach out to me here or send a direct message. It's up to you. If you have any questions, feel free. Um, that's all I have today. Um, let me check for questions. I don't think I have any more questions.
all right thanks everyone for joining have a good day <clears throat>